kind of room for a tree today. Esperanto, the world's language. Why we all need to learn it and how it should adapt it for our universal environment. So I base my whole argument over the design of the language makes it optimal for a universal platform. It offers a possibility at peace. It preserves linguistic diversity. It's extremely easy to learn. And um, as we know with the bilingual brains, it has brain benefits of having people by being bilingual. And it also facilitates learning of other languages as well. So first of all, what is Esperanto? It's a man-made language. In the mid-1800s, the doctors saw issues with um, multiculturalism in Poland. Different demographics were not getting along because they couldn't understand each other. So he said, let's build a new language. And it lacked a connected culture. So that means that when you learn Spanish, you are connecting with that uh, continent, with that country, um, and you're relating to it. So with a language that doesn't have that, you have the benefit of when you learn it, it's, it's entirely neutral. It helps people come together. Um, it's based off of a unique root system. So it started off with about 900 roots. And um, as you can see here, here's an example. There's the, there we go. Here's a root, parole. And um, now when you add an O on the end of it, it means the speech. So anytime you add a noun, it has an O. To make it a verb for each different tense, it's different ending. So in this case, it's AS. So he, she, it, they, we, speaks. There's no conjugation, you just do the correct tense. Adjective ends with an A, so parola is oral. And then an adverb is with an E at the end, so parole, orally. So with one root, you can have the seven parts of speech in Esperanto learn really quickly. So it multiplies your learning significantly. You learn those 900 words, um, and it exponentially grows. So here's a little example I whipped up. Um, Spruti quickly throws the full bottle at the students. Or Spruti rapide jetas la saca botelon cola studentum. So first of all, I want to add, I've learned Esperanto for about five hours. I was able to put this together. Um, and it's the same subject as in English, but you see the adverb ends with the E. Now the verb has a little hat over the J. And that's unique to Esperanto, and that just means that the J sounds like an actual J in English, as we would pronounce it. Um, for the article, the only article in the whole language is la. There's no masculine, feminine. There's no uh, indefinite articles. It's just la. Um, there's the adjective salta, which is full, and then botelon. And um, botel, I believe, is a root. So you could say botelas, rudi botelas, rudi bottles. Um, then there's prepositions, just like in English. They're all designed to be really short and easy to understand. And then at the end, we have studentoin. And notice the extra J in there that's pronounced as a Y. And um, that means that it's a plural. And then the N at the very end of studentoin also signifies it's a direct object. So it's, and it has an accusative tense, which we don't have that in English, but anyone who's learned German or anything like that can understand. So that tells us what the direct object of the sentence is. So what is Spruti throwing at the students? So notice Botelon has it as well. And um, that allows the word order to change. So when you learn a language, when you learn Spanish, we know that it goes um, noun and then adjective. And then in English, it's adjective and then noun. In Esperanto, you don't have to worry about that necessarily. So you can come up with the word order, but the words, like the way you add the emphasis with the ends at the end, tell us where it fits. So here's my argument for how Esperanto can bring peace. So first of all, just having a universal language creates mutual understanding. But specifically in Esperanto, because it's culturally neutral, it strives for peace, but the whole language community has what they call the Brotherhood of Humanity. Um, if you look at the forums online or um, the, the, the newsletters that people have for Esperanto, the whole focus is like humanity as a society rather than countries or language groups or cultures as a society. And I really think that can contribute to the whole world peace plan. It also focuses on the democratization of languages, how you should be able to speak the language you want to speak. Um, so ease of learning. Once again, the language is entirely phonetic. There are 16 grammar rules, simplified vocabulary using roots, um, and then a nomenclature system. So when you want to name something, there's a set system that you would go through to name that object. And that helps new words form. In English, we don't really have a convention for coming up with new words very easily that, this, that different people will be able to come up with the same answer. Um, it's also known to be equally attainable for all learners. So a Chinese person learning Esperanto can learn it in roughly 
in roughly the same amount of time an English person can, except with the issue of having a Latin alphabet. So brain benefits, we know from the bilingual brain that bilingualism increases gray matter and delay Alzheimer's. And um, I'm arguing that if we have an easy to learn language like Esperanto that we can come up with universally, um, these benefits can be seen across the board. Esperanto promotes linguistic diversity because it's meant to be a secondary language. When I'm asking you to pick up a universal language, I'm not asking you to replace all your culture and your whole like primary native tongue. I'm saying we all just need to know it. Um, so we can talk to people from around the world and have Esperanto as a tool to do that. But in a daily classroom, we can still use English or whatever language we'd like to use. It also acts as a stepping stone for learning languages. I'll get into that a little later, how that can benefit um, other harder languages. It's once again equally attainable, and frequently people will learn Esperanto so they can travel. In, in like uh, Western and Eastern Europe, where there's tons of different languages, um, people will learn Esperanto so they can go and travel. And like if you ever heard of Airbnb, sometimes there's places on there that says this person speaks Esperanto. So people will learn Esperanto so they can travel. And so that kind of goes into the whole linguistic diversity. You can see the rest of the world and learn those languages. So Esperanto can act as a stepping stone to other languages because um, it can help learners adjust to learning two languages. So when you're dealing with Spanish, it's a little bit more difficult than Esperanto. But if you start out learning Esperanto and English, um, you get used to the mental gymnastics that go on with having two languages. But you're dealing with a simpler language. Um, because it's so fast to learn, learners can skip to creativity and making things with the language versus the memorization that seems to occur with a lot of low-level foreign language classes, where you're just stuck memorizing day in and day out with nothing to show for it. It also aids in learning reading. There's been studies done where um, kids who just speak English normally um, are taught how to read in Esperanto, and those skills transfer over to English. They learn how to read in English faster because they learn to read in Esperanto first. It also teaches linguistic skills. So um, one study done in, uh, I believe, in a British school Half the school was taught French for, for two years. Another half of the school was taught Esperanto for 18 months. They scored roughly the same on a French proficiency exam. So one group spent, the one who was learning Esperanto had less time in the classroom and learning a totally different language, yet they scored roughly the same as a French learning group. It was because of the linguistic skills they learned. They could use cognates, context, parts of speech, the, the basic linguistic skills we need um, but it could transform to any language. And I watched a TED talk about Esperanto and why we all need to learn it. And um, the whole point of the speaker was, um, how many of you started with a recorder before you learned to play an instrument? Like that. Esperanto could be the recorder of language. If we start out with it, it's simple, it's easy to use, it's transferable, you can use it like a language. Um, while it's not big and beautiful and romantic like some other big ones like oboes or French horns, it can be usable. And after you learn those skills with Esperanto, the linguistic skills, how to, the whole foreign language thing works, you can move on to bigger languages like French or Chinese. So how are we doing on time? We're good. How long is this? Just a minute long. Okay. If you can click on the link, it'll exit Prezi for a second because I have to have subtitles on for it. This is just an example of a native Esperanto speaker, which is really rare. Hey, Cooper. Can you this via Bosho? So um, that's just an example of the language. You can hear it a little bit. 
And what I want to make mention of is how um, dialect. Okay. <laughs> it auto played the next week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the dialect. It sounded kind of like an English dialect. And I was watching videos of people speaking Esperanto. And I found that I could hear the words they were saying, even though I didn't understand it necessarily very easily. And that's because the language is so phonetic that it takes um, their native language out of the, the whole equation. So if people who learn Spanish or Chinese first before learning Esperanto, it sounds like they're speaking English with their, their accent. So that's really nice when you're learning it. It makes it easier to communicate. If you speak to a native speaker and, holy cow, they talk so fast and there's this really strong accent, I don't know what's going on. Esperanto kind of eliminates that. And then now that you know why we all need to learn Esperanto so we can create world peace and um, have the bilingual benefits, I would recommend you go to Duolingo. On April 22nd, they're coming out with Esperanto. So you can learn Esperanto for free online. And um, I'm saying this is a phenomenal thing because we can get the whole universal language thing rolling. So here's where we're excited. And then just go through it one more time. The language is built so it's easy to learn, easy to use. It promotes linguistic diversity has the possibility of bringing peace to us if adopted as a universal language, and it facilitates learning of other languages. It's a recorder of languages. Esperanto. All right, great, thank you, Ian. So two questions, and if you need me to clarify, I can. Okay. So first question, how did your research question evolve as you moved through the research process? Um, did it go in a different direction than you thought originally? Yeah, a little bit. I've always been interested in linguistics, that sort of thing. And so I went to this paper thinking, bilingual brain, maybe I'll look at um, why we should all learn to become bilingual. And I, as I was kind of looking at that, I came across Esperanto, and I thought, well, most people have never heard of that. I've never heard of it. Um, and then I kind of looked into it more, and I realized that this has a lot of potential. And it kind of falls into that realm of um, multiple, multiple languages. Um, that's pretty much how it evolved. It went from the broad bilingualism to I found Esperanto and said, Wow, we need to use this. Um, is that kind of how it went there? Sure, great. Um, and then, well, what advice would you have for other researchers who consider this topic? Ooh, the tricky part for this one is um, I had to use a lot, a lot of primary sources and less like studies. Um, so you have to be able to sift through people who are just bloggers who are mm -hmm. talking about it versus people who are like legitimate. Like I read the Esperanto Manifesto, which is like their statement of goals and that sort of thing. And so that's more of a primary source I could use, where there's people, bloggers, who vent, everyone needs to be learning Esperanto. The fact that we're speaking any other language is, is absurd, or other people who are just against it for just you know, reasons. So you have to be able to sift through what's credible and what's not credible a lot more than most topics. Sure, great, thank you. Nice job.